Odin is considered the leader of the gods in polytheistic Norse and Scandinavian mythology. Odin has authority over the supremacy of all gods and men, freedom and courage of heroes, love, war, fatal diseases and death. Odin is also known. Odin is also described as a mutually trustworthy and confidential friend who gives help without reciprocity. The leader of the gods bestows special powers and rewards those who follow him. Odin is also seen as a god who promotes wisdom beyond death and the right path. Odin is also recognized and praised for encouraging honesty and righteous deeds. Odin is probably the most revered god in Norse mythology and is also the king of the Asir, community of gods. He is one of the most enigmatic characters in Norse mythology. He was the king of Asgard, where the Asir gods gather and live. Odin's wife is the mother goddess Frigg. She is the goddess who knows the fate of every human being who has ever been born and will ever be born. His children from his wife Frigg are Baldr, Hod Bragi and Hermit. His child from the goddess Jord is Thor. And his child from the giant Grid is Vidar. In addition to these names, we should not forget his stepchild Loki. The name of the house where Odysseus lives in Asgard is Voloskiaf and the name of the throne he sits on his Slidskalf. From this throne he could see all nine realms. Odin had two ravens, these ravens, named Hugin and Munin, meaning thought and memory, brought to Odin everything that was happening in the world. He also had two wolves, Freki Predator and Jerry Greedy, who accompanied him. The wise Odin was not a god who cared much about social values, such as justice and laws, but he was the divine protector of both kings and bandits. The leader of the gods, was known not only as a great god of war, but also as the god of poetry, magic, wisdom, death and prophecy. He was worshipped by those who sought prestige, honor and nobility. The god Odin was known as Woden to the Anglo-Saxons, Woden to the South Germanic people, and Wednesday. Pronounced Wednesday in English, was formerly Woden's Day. In short, Wednesday is Odin's day. Little is known about Odin's origins. He is known as the child of Bestle and Bor. Odin's name has two parts. It is derived from the combination of the words Otter and In. Od means anger. Inspiration. Well In means master. In short, Odin means master of anger. According to one legend, the leader of the gods delighted the spirits of his friends when he spent time with them. But his behavior in battle was incredibly cruel. This fervor that Odin embodies and brings is especially associated with sovereignty, wisdom, magic, poetry, poetry, the dead and war. The unifying factors behind countless habitats. According to Norse mythology, he killed the primordial giant Ymir with his brothers Vili and V when the world did not yet exist. He then used Ymir's body to create the universe and the human world of Midgard, one of the nine worlds. Odin created the heavens for the gods, the middle world for dwarves and humans, and the underworld for the dead. He then created Asker and Embla, the first humans. From a tree trunk, Asker was a man and Embla a woman. Odin breathed life into them. Vil, emotion and thought, and V, speech and hearing. The leader of the gods ruled the universe from his palace called Valhalla in Asgard. And as the god of war, he watched the warriors go in into battle. Odin, sitting on his throne in Frigg in the hall of Valhalla, looked at the whole world and realized that he wanted to know everything. It was his greatest desire to learn and to know even the secret knowledge that was hidden from him. That is why he was on an endless quest for wisdom. It was believed that whoever drank from Mimir's all would gain wisdom. However, one had to ask Mimir's permission to drink its water. Mimir asked Toten to sacrifice himself to drink from this water or else he would never be able to drink from this. He said that he would not give permission. He sacrificed his left eye in order to drink from Mimir's well, the source of wisdom and prophecy. He jumped on his own spear, Gundnir. In a kind of symbolic suicide, he hung himself for nine days and nine nights on the Tree of Life, Yggdrasil, a giant tree believed to connect the nine realms. In order to understand all the words and writings of the world, during his acts of sacrifice, he began to see visions and gain hidden wisdom. Through his magical knowledge he learned to heal the sick, calm storms and make women fall in love. Often with just a glance, Odin could also change shape. He could take the form of an animal or a person. 
Odin was also a poet and the god of poetry. Odin only spoke in poems. The ability to write poetry was a gift he gave himself. He had a beautiful and persuasive speaking and writing style. He would share his poems with the gods or some people and creatures he deemed worthy. According to Scandinavian mythology, two dwarfs named Fjallar and Galar killed the creature named Kvasir and prepared a drink by mixing its blood with honey. The resulting drink became a honey wine that turned the drinker into a poet. And they kept it in the cauldron. For three months, a giant named Sudden appeared and stole the cauldrons full of wine from these dwarfs. Odin also started making a plan to steal the drink from Sudden. For this reason, he seduced the giant's daughter. It entered the female giant's mind so much that she agreed to give Odin a sip of each, the leader of the gods, who did not miss this opportunity, emptied the cauldrons in three gulps. Then he turned into an eagle and flew away over the mountains to avoid being caught. Realizing that he had been deceit, Sudden wore an eagle skin and went after Odin to catch him. The Asir saw that Odin, who was floating above their palace, was in great danger. In order to help the leader of the Asir, they immediately lined up all the buckets, jars and utensils in the middle of the palace courtyard. Odin vomited all the honey wine. He drank into these items collected in this courtyard. Thus, the mead was kept in the palace of the Asir until the day it was distributed to those who wanted to become poets. The art of poetry with this story is called Odin's Drink Odin. Discovery of Odin In modern popular culture, Odin is often depicted as an extremely honorable ruler and a formidable battlefield commander. Unlike noble war gods such as Thor, he more openly encouraged peaceful people into struggles that were downright sinister to modern tastes for the leader of the Asir. What matters is not the cause or consequences behind the war, but rather the raw and chaotic frenzy of war that permeates the struggle. According to Norse mythology, Yggdrasil is referred to as the Tree of Life. In Norse mythology, it is referred to as the Tree of Fate. The universe, consisting of nine realms created by the leader of the Asir, and his brothers with the body of the primitive giant Ymir, is sustained by the roots of this tree that reach deep underground. The branches of Yggdrasil surround all the lands. One of these worlds is Midgard, where people live. In Asgard, there is the Valhalla Palace, which is under the rule of Odin, the king of the gods. Only warriors who die while fighting but showed heroism while alive could enter this palace. The souls of deserving people were collected from the battlefields by Odin's assistants, the Valkyries, and brought to Valhalla. Valkyries were young, beautiful, warlike and brave maidens. In Scandinavian mythology, they are depicted with helmets and spears. The leader of the Asir was not interested in average warriors and did not hesitate to shower his blessings on warriors he deemed worthy. This name, which has no connection with Ragnar from the Viking series, is actually the apocalypse in Norse mythology. According to mythology, there will be war and death everywhere. Jormungan and Odin's son Thor will fight, and if Thor wins the war, he will die because he is poisoned by Jormungand. Fenrir will break his chains and eat Odin. But his other son, Vidar, will kill Fenrir. Later, Heimdall, the protector of Asgard, will encounter Loki, Odin's adopted son, and they will kill each other. In the end, the world will surrender to the flames, and the entire universe will be submerged in water. Then the universe will rise again from the water, plants will revive and emerge, and life will continue. Baldur, Odin's son from Frigg, is a handsome and intelligent god. Although he was not very strong, he was loved by gods and people, because it is adorned with elements such as light, happiness, beauty and purity. Baldur tells the Asir about a dream he had one night that disturbed him greatly. He explains that his life is in danger in his dream. His mother Frigg makes fire, water, stone and earth swear that they will not harm her innocent son Baldur. The Asir swear an oath for this and take Baldur among them. God Loki, the representative of evil, begins to investigate the situation and disguises himself to talk to Frigg. He only learns that Mistletoe doesn't swear. Loki finds the mistletoe and gives it to Hodor. Hodor kills Baldur with mistletoe. The Asir seek revenge. But violence of any kind is forbidden in the sacred palace. 
Baldur is not a warrior and for this reason he will not be able to go to Valhalla. Odin goes to Hel, the protector of the dead, and asks her to release Baldur. Hel says this can only be possible if everything living and dead sheds tears for Baldur. Hel says this can only be possible if everything living and dead sheds tears for Baldur. This news spreads everywhere, but no one agrees to it except one. This person is none other than Loki, disguised as a giant, realizing that the giant was Loki. The Asir caught Loki and immediately chained him, but Loki managed to break his chains and escape. Thus begins Ragnarok.